I was wondering, just going through your, your coaching kind of career, I was looking at. Yeah. When you uh, coached Tampa, then you took a little time off before you got back into the game. Like, what did you do those few years when you were kind of recharging after that experience in Tampa? So I did a little bit of uh, uh, TV with the Flyers post game. Oh, okay. Pre and post game. Was you know, Jonesy the, there then too? I took Jonesy's job. So <laughs> Jonesy, Jonesy's a you know he's a legend uh, NBC guy. So I was that you know pre post guy. And that also was a fun year because the Flyers went to the Stanley Cup Finals. So that was a lot of fun. It's amazing when you're on TV, you know, people see your... So I remember walking the streets of Philly. People know me as it is, but still going there. Hey, talk, great job. You, you know, great job, great series. I'm like, I'm a pre and post game guy. I'm not a coach or a player. I don't know what you're congratulating me on the Flyers winning, but uh, that was a great, that was a lot of fun to do. I think TV. if you get enough Gordy Howes in that city, they'll just kind of say hi to you whenever you're walking the streets. Well, they love the fights. They, they, they love the fights. I remember going to a bar when I played. Oh. And if, you know, you, you, I remember you score a couple of goals, you go in there and, you know, guys are having to buy you drinks all the time. And then they go, man, you, yeah, but you didn't get in a fight. Man, we won, we won no 42. Shit. I got two goals. But you get two fights, and it's like these guys love it. So um, it's an aggressive city, and I think that's one thing that they want their teams. They want that flyer identity back. They've kind of lost right now, and I yeah. think that's what they're looking for. I remember playing there, and it was, it was yeah, they had Giroux. They had Richards, yeah. Carter. And Richards yeah. chucked them, but it was more Riley, Cote, and Grattan. It right. was like those were the two guys. You're yeah. right. They just eat it up there. Yeah. And it's uh, and you guys had the rivals with Pittsburgh. Yeah, I mean, those were big rivals, and they still is. It's one of the best rivals I think in in the NHL. And so, in your time in Philly, I mean, yeah. two two different runs to the finals, right? Yeah. And both times you run into this juggernaut Oilers squad. Yeah. Like, was there one of the years or both of the years where you kind of knew, oh my God, like we're in when we're going to have to play the greatest hockey ever to have a chance, or were you really kind of thinking we can beat these guys? Like this isn't that big of a deal. Eighty seven, we had them. Like, you can ask Gretz. I mean, their team was far superior, but I'm telling you, and we talk about being – our team was relentless. We were in great shape. We had – actually, uh, Tim Kerr was hurt, so he never played. And I think Brad McCrimmon got hurt at the end. So two of our star players were out, and we took oh. them to game seven. And we lost uh, – Anderson scored an empty net, but it was two to one. It was, well, actually, we're up one nothing. We had a five on three in the second period. And I – yeah, yeah. And oh. Murray Craven – and, you know, it was a rebound. You know, sometimes when you got to guess, sometimes you, you go right or left. Like, you know, there's a re he went like this. He went the, this way. The puck went this way. If he goes this way, it's in the net. Two, it's nothing. two nothing. And Hexy at that time was, you know, he won the con Smythe. Uh, you never know. But, you know, listen, Edmonton, they're a far superior team. Yeah. You know, the talent level they had was uh, McCrimmon, he was, he was one of the vets that took you under his wing. Love that guy. Uh, it wasn't for him. I mean, he was a, this guy was, when you talk about old school like he does beast, right? the beast. He was the best. I remember we went out one night and I stayed with him. I, I stayed with, I roomed with him for two months. I was trying to find a place. It was like in August and he was a big workout guy. We like to go out and we went out and we had this place called Kaminsky's. It was kind of a water hole for all the flyers and you know, a lot, lot of people in there. We just have a great time. And I remember he, we used to drink Stro lights. Remember, they still have Stro light out there? <laughs> I don't know. Stro Stros? Stros. Oh, yeah. Remember, I remember right? I don't know if they're still around, but I remember Stro them, lights. Yeah. And I remember <laughs> we, you know, Brad had about 30 of these things. I had like 20. <laughs> we get home at 3.34 in the morning. And uh, we we had originally uh, had a 7 o'clock or 7.30 run with somebody. And, and, and I'm, I'm lying in bed. And it's like 7 o'clock. And he goes, what are you doing? I said, but let's just go later. He goes, no, no, let's fucking go. Get your shit on. So we get in the car, we go there, and we're running. We have to do it under 12 minutes, this two-mile thing. You have to do it twice. So we're running. You know, you're hungover. We make it the first time, right? So now we do it. I go, Beast, you seriously we got to do it? Yeah. I mean, I'm a 20-year-old kid. So we do it again, and I watch him. Now, he has to take a shit. So... <laughs> He, you know what he does? He takes he those nylons. He takes it. He didn't. He wanted to make While running. time. He's running. But he's, he slowed down a bit, and he was just he's taking a shit. <laughs> Puts his thing back on, and he makes the twelve minutes. <laughs> That's how great. That's how obsessive this guy was. And this wasn't even the test. This he was, was just like, training for the test. He was like Chelios before Chelios. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. What a story. Yeah. Brad McCrimmon. Like you're basically saying, like, can we just do it at eleven? Like, why do we have to do it at seven? We got no home chance. two hours ago. And, you know him. He's the veteran, right? And uh, you know, what a great person. Well, right? him and Mark Howe. I, I see. I, lucky, I, I stayed beside. Uh, I uh, what do you call it? Sat beside him for practice. You know, the the, the rink, the stalls. Yeah. So it's my third year, and I'm like, you know. I thought we had a day off. We had to come and practice. You know, you know, you thought you you think you make it, right? And like you're bitching. This is a joke. And I'm bitching the trainers. I'm bitching everybody. I sit down. Those guys tore a strip out of me. Who the fuck do you think you are? You know, you guys are. You know, guys work nine to five. You know, your dad was a mechanic. Like, what would he say? And like, 
Like I was like sinking. And I went through practice and I was like, man, you know, tail between my legs. After practice, I remember I was taking a shower and B says, hey, hurry up, we're going to lunch. Went to lunch with him, Mark Howe, Dave Poole, and those guys. And we were just, we didn't, they never mentioned one thing to me about wow. that. They just, it was their way of saying, hey, buddy, we get it. But, you know, let's. But we had to wake you up a little bit. We had bit. to wake you up. And uh, that those are the le- life lessons I got from those guys. Who knows? If I, you know, if I have the wrong guys, maybe I don't play as long as I did. I don't know. But those guys really helped my career. Did you see some uh, Hextall snap shows over the years? Yeah, yeah. On and off the ice? Yeah. He, he has his pads <laughs> and he has his, he has everything perfectly. And if you touch, you know, you, you know, it's not big dressings back then. So, you know, you go by. If you, I remember if you touch his pad, he, he gets mad at you. Like, you know, um, he, uh, he breaks those ESPN uh, back then. Those are uh, cameras, and, and you know, after the game, he smashes. Guy. Yeah, he was nuts, Hexy. Yeah. What did you think as as a Flyers legend yourself? I mean, when Clark came, Bobby Clark came out this year and kind of blamed him for the drafts lately. Were you, yeah. Were you a little surprised by that? Yeah, I'm a little surprised from Clarky. You know, Cl- you know, Clarky's a he's a wonderful guy. He's you know, ultimate. He was a great GM for me too, and a great player, and a great friend. Yep. I was a little surprised. Yeah. I, 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 I don't know why he went that deep with it. Um, maybe there's some animosity there. I don't know. So yeah. I was a little surprised like you guys. Um, Mark Howe, like, I mean, here, how many stories do you know about Gordy just from talking to him? Yeah, I mean. Would you just pick his brain nonstop about yeah, that stuff? Yeah, He's Mark, a Hall of Famer himself. Mark Howe's, and you can ask Wayne Gretzky, and he'll put, you know, he'll say cough, but he'll put Mark Howe in his one of the greatest player defensemen he's ever played against. And he, when a great player, like the best say, say that, you know how good Mark What was his game like? Like, cause I don't, I don't know much about him. Like more all around, not too all physical. Around. or what all, he No, he, he, physical in his own way, you know, just a, you know, body position, physical, quick strikes, physical. Uh, um, but he was a, um, if he wanted to cheat the game a little bit, he could be, you know, he could have scored more and stuff, but he yeah. was all around unbelievable player. Yeah. Definitely a, Unreal Hall of Famer. 